From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, everybody, this is Dave Vellante and welcome to this Cube Conversation. You know, in this COVID-19 pandemic, we've been reaching out to folks that really have good visibility on what's going on out there. Tim Conley is here. He's a principal with the ATS Group and a partner of IBM's. Tim, good to see you again, man. Thanks for coming on. You got it, Dave. How are you today? Not too bad. You hanging in there with all this craziness? How are things? Yeah, we sure are. It's like Groundhog Day every day, right? I know. It's, the family's going crazy. They they want to get out. And well, summer's coming, so you know. Hopefully, the the pandemic is uh, going to calm down a little bit here. Give us some breathing. I hear that. But uh, but so. Uh, Tell us what's going on uh, these days with your company, with, with the ATS group. What are you seeing in the marketplace? Give us the update. Sure, Dave. Uh, we've been in business 19 years now as a IBM systems integrator, uh, doing a lot of uh, work around storage. Um, there's a lot of shiny new nickels out there these days that we're trying to make sure that we stay ahead of uh, the game on. You know, our customers are demand excellence from us because that's what we've been giving them the last you know 19 years. So they demand that from us, which is actually a great position for us to be in. But you know, with a lot of the new shiny new nickels out there today, it takes a lot of energy to focus on those, make sure we're talking to our customers about the right things uh, at the right times in the marketplace. Well, I had Ed Walsh on the other day, and actually a couple times this, this within the last six months. And uh, he, he shared with us, actually in studio, when we didn't have to be six feet apart, yeah. the, the, the new announcements, the simplification of the portfolio, presumably you've You've seen that. What was your reaction? And how do you think the, the customers will react? Uh, that's a good question. We're all, like I said, we're always looking to be leading edge. That's actually where we got our name from, Advanced Technology Services Group. Um, so IBM uh, consistently comes out with some really good products and solutions, and uh, we're constantly vetting them out in our innovation center um, uh, in beta programs and things like that. Uh, a couple of key things that are working now with us is, um, uh, hybrid multi-cloud, you know, IBM comes out, like I said, with some good solutions, we vet them out and we're uh, real excited about Spectrum Virtualized for public cloud. Um, uh, we've been in using that for probably the last 12, 14 months. So trying to get the word out to our customers on what it means to our partners as well. We can have a simple 10 minute conversation with our customers and our partners, kind of describe it at a high level and then they can you know, gain interest from at that point. It's a, it can, can be a little tricky, but we try to take that out of, um, uh, trickiness out of it and let our customers know what's really going on, how it works uh, for disaster recovery, for data protection to the cloud. Customers always want to talk about those things, but a lot of them really don't know those specifics. So we literally in 10 to 15 minutes can simplify it to them, let them know how it works and in what scenarios it might work for them. And again, doing a tests and um, POCs, things like that is really easy for us to do or doing one of our uh, big uh, federal customers on a call today at uh, 12 o'clock going over that uh, implementation. They're pretty excited about trying it out because everybody thinks they want to move some things to the cloud. So um, Spectrum Virtualize allows us to do that pretty transparently. In fact, we used it ourselves uh, last year because uh, we took the journey to the cloud for our SaaS offering. It took us over a year to do it. And let me tell you, it's not easy. You know, people make, make it sound like going to the cloud is a snap, you know, Spin up some OS instances, some EBS storage, and away we go. It's not that easy. I was just I was just talking to a software executive who started his company 37 years ago, and we both agreed. Every, and that's the kind of when I started in this business, we both agreed. It just keeps getting more and more complicated. So firms like yours are are, are key. But okay, so you talk about hybrid multi cloud. Of course, IBM has a cloud, uh, but IBM itself says, "Hey, we hope people put their data into our cloud, but we know there's other clouds out there." Well, hence multi-cloud. So what do you see as going on in the marketplace, specifically as it relates to, to multi-cloud? And I wonder if we could weave in the, the COVID-19. Are you seeing people more receptive to cloud? Yeah, I'll tell you with COVID-19, we've had some opportunities delay because customers don't quite know where the market's going to go for themselves. If we actually had one customer go out of business, um, so that ultimately delayed a deal forever, right? But overall things aren't, aren't that bad, but we do see customers, you know, looking to make some things easier for themselves. They might have been thinking about the cloud, but COVID's kind of brought it to the forefront and they want to make things easier right away, maybe even save some money, right? So we have a calculator we created for our, our customers to really go measure things to see what, what actually would it cost to go to cloud. You know, a lot of customers have no clue what it is. We could do that in five minutes for them. It's really interesting. So. Again, we'll give that, that information that 
hey, going to cloud might be uh, an, an opportunity that they didn't think might be exist until now. So Spectrum Virtualize, otherwise known, you know, for those who've been around for a while, like I have, is kind of the the, the roots of this are in uh, SVC, the SAN volume controller, and and the history of that product is the software that enables you to to virtualize not just IBM storage but anybody's storage. And of course, one of the major use cases was 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 uh, has been migration. So in downturns, uh, people want to get more value out of existing system. Um, you know, maybe they come off lease or maybe they want to elongate the life and they, they may not have all the functions so they can plug it into an SBC and they get all the wonderful new bells yep. and whistles and the capabilities there. I wonder if you could talk about that and, and tr again, what you're seeing just in terms of the current, you know, economic situation and then specifically as it relates to cloud. That's a really good point. So you're tying two key things in today, right? You, customers are looking to save money because they don't know what their financial outlook is based on COVID-19. So being able to help customers, and you nail it, right? Uh, SVCs, uh, Spectrum Virtualize has been around for, gosh, probably 11, 12 years now, 13 years actually, right? So we pride ourselves on bringing that to customers, showing them how they can virtualize their environments in the storage arena, uh, and we have some gigantic customers uh, in the federal space, commercial space. So we we don't just bring out white papers, say, yeah, well, it kind of looks good, right? We actually have distinct customers and talk to them about how they can drive their storage efficiencies up with IBM technology, especially virtualization. Um, and then, you know, reducing their overall costs, that's key, especially now customers are constantly looking to reduce their, their costs and whatnot with their storage. So that's a perfect inroad to that. And then, bringing in the multi-cloud part of it, you're just extending Spectrum Virtualize to the cloud. You know, it was in IBM Cloud first, uh, it was in AWS back June of last year, uh, and now we're working with IBM on putting that out into Azure. You know, so we can bring those savings to, um, to customers in the cloud, which they didn't know they could do that before. All right, Tim, talk a little bit more about multi-cloud because, you know, I've joked uh, recently, up until recently anyway, that multi-cloud is more of a, of a, of a symptom of multi-vendor as opposed to a strategy, but, with shadow IT and sort of rogue systems and the marketing department, the sales, everybody doing their own cloud. Essentially multi-cloud has become a strategy that the CIO has been asked to come in, hey, we got all these clouds, C clean up the crime scene, I call it. So what, what are you seeing today around multi-cloud? That's a great point. I like that term, I'm going to steal it if you don't mind. Uh, multi-clouds, customers are very much interested in, we have several customers doing multi-cloud, uh, IBM, Amazon, Azure. We actually did a study for an Azure customer um, where we actually projected them to go to AWS with substantial cost savings. Uh, some of that had to do with uh, right sizing their environment where they weren't right sized in Azure today. Um, but I got to tell you, you know, cloud's not simple. It's not easy. Again, I said mentioned earlier, you know, we took that journey ourselves, spent a lot of time and energy with uh, some really smart guys on my team uh, to take that journey. So multi-cloud is a really great idea and should be looked at. But I'm telling you, it's not quite that easy to just shift around, but there are definitely things to move to uh, different cloud vendors. Uh, again, if we bring it back to the storage arena, right? Spectrum Virtualize today is in IBM and Amazon, it's not in other cloud. So if you want to go that route, perfect opportunity to go uh, multi-cloud. Yeah, I mean, I think you're making a good point. We, let's, let's face it for our audience. We're in the early days of multi-cloud. Yes, everybody has multiple clouds. Everybody talks about having multiple clouds, but to be able to run applications natively in, in all these different clouds, uh, with, with it's the control plane, the data plane, the transport plane, you know, all, all these uh, uh, disparate uh, systems, and really be able to take native advantage of the local cloud services. That's not only very complex, it's really not fully baked out here today, but you know, we heard you know, this week at, uh, at IBM Think, a lot of talk about Red Hat, uh, containers, and OpenShift. So we're starting on that journey, and that's really the promise of, of multi-cloud, to be able to ultimately uh, run applications anywhere. But as you point out, that's a very complex situation today for customers. Yeah, that's a good point. So I would I'd, I'd totally follow up with you on that. That's multi-cloud customers are looking at it and there are some distinct advantages to the different cloud vendors. Uh, one could even say on-prem is a, a form of cloud, right? That's just your private cloud. So keeping things on-prem for certain scenarios makes sense, be able, but be able to tie that back to uh, the big cloud vendors, IBM, Amazon, Azure, right? Tying them together is a direction people are looking to go and are kind of 
some of them are there and have done it. Um, but I'd say some, uh, some or more of them are in the infancy stage of that. But what are you seeing uh, in terms of, just kind of switching topics on you, in terms of things like governance, uh, compliance, a lot of talk about cyber resiliency, especially given the pandemic. What, what are you seeing there with customers? Wow, that's a, that's a big topic. Um, <laughs> it's an, an interesting data classification. You'd think it'd be that easy, uh, especially for some of our Fed customers. It's not that easy, right? Trying to classify the data. They just don't know. They might know the applications, but they don't know the content of that data. Is it uh, able to be, uh, what is it, uh, Section 126, something like that? Mm -hmm. Is it able to go to the cloud? So customers have a struggle uh, on their hands trying to do that, right? The technology groups within the, the customers, the storage folks, the OS folks, the apps folks, they're all about the cloud, moving things to the cloud. But at the end of the day, it's the security folks that need to be able to do that data classification to see can the data even go there, let alone the, um, the application and whatnot. It's fairly easy to do that kind of stuff, but the data classification, that we see that's the hard part. Hey, so you talked about shiny, shiny new toys at the beginning of this conversation. Uh, you know, IBM, it tried to be a shiny old toy that have been around you know, a <laughs> century. Uh, yeah. Why IBM though? What is it about IBM that, that you, you choose to partner with them and, and you know, give us the, the good, the bad, and the, what you'd like to see improve? Um, I would say we've been a partner for, for IBM a long time. I used to work for IBM you know, a million years ago. Um, at the end of the day, our customers demand excellence from us and they demand things to work, right? So for me to put my company and my resources uh, into an opportunity for my customers, uh, we can count on IBM because one, we have a, one, a great relationship with them. They have fantastic solutions. Um, and then we vet them out. Our customers demand that of us. And I can give real world examples of one customer to another. So again, it's not like a white paper. I read it from vendor XYZ. At the end of the day, we're implementing these solutions at our customers. A lot of times we're doing them in our lab first to make sure it works as uh, as designed, figure out the uh, we get the shiny new nickels, you know, what's broken with that nickel? Well, why is it not so shiny? Or is it really as shiny as it appears to be, right? So be able to do that stuff in-house is great. But at the end of the day, our customers demand excellence. And, um, you know, we have to be bringing solutions to our customers. And IBM provides quite a few solutions, especially around storage arena, where we uh, live and breathe that uh, into the marketplace. So uh, we, we have to use great solutions that we can trust and know work. So my last question is, you know, what have, what have you learned in the last, you know, a couple of months with this pandemic. Now that we start to hopefully come out of it at least, at least for a little while, what are you learning? What's what's been accelerated or pulled forward? Um, and and we're obviously not just going back to 2019. So how are you seeing your business and and your customers responding? What's the sort of mindset going forward? Um, I'd say two things. So there's the COVID stuff, and then I talk about. Um, Ransomware, cybersecurity, that could be another whole topic, right? But at the end of the day, I've been on a lot of webinars and things of the last mm, three, four weeks, five weeks, listening to different vendors talk about their shiny new nickels. Uh, and it's, quite frankly, it's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And that's not the world we live in because that's not what the, our customers are asking from us. Uh, but a lot of customers are really concerned about cybersecurity, ransomware. Uh, I have two customers locally that got hit with ransomware last fall. And let me tell you, it's not a pretty scene and they were not prepared for it, right? So one of our jobs is to really help our, our customers understand where their gaps are uh, within their organizations so that if they do get hit by cybercrime or ransomware, uh, that they can actually survive that and not actually have to pay for it and be up and running in a, a variable small amount of time, which is key. Like I said, two customers got hit just of mine within 20 miles of our business uh, and they weren't prepared for it. Oh, I can't leave it there. Tim, what do I got to do? If I'm, a, if I'm an organization that's concerned about ransomware, which is probably every organization, what are the steps that I should take like immediately? I would say a health assessment as something, and it doesn't have to be from ATS, it could be from anybody that's got the, the experience and whatnot. Uh, we do health checks for our customers consistently. Um, and they don't have to be expensive. They don't have to be like months. People always think a health check, oh my God, it's going to take so much time. It really doesn't. It's a quick, Quick health check and we can look at those key things within your organization to see where you might not be prepared. And I'm talking like not prepared, like if you get ransomware tomorrow, you very well could be out of business. It's not hard to see those kinds of things. And you can make it more detailed if customers want that, right? But I would definitely have customers, if you're interested in that, you know, call us, call any other vendor out there that's doing those kinds of things. But it's, it's fairly easy for uh, folks like us and other vendors to be able to do 
those health checks. Just to take a quick look in your environment, see where your uh, your gaps are that you could literally go out of business tomorrow. Okay, so first pass is you're looking for open chest wounds that you got to close immediately, stop the bleeding, uh, mm -hmm. and then. And then what? You start implementing things, you know, best practices, air gap, obviously. Air gap, you, know, you still were right on my mind. Air gap, right? Yeah, yep. start, you know, look and see where, you know, what's, what's the requirements. First of all, make sure you can survive the event and get back up and running in a reasonable amount of time, right? That one customer I mentioned, it was probably four or five weeks before they were able to restore all their servers. And they were fortunate oh. that a lot of those were dev test things that they could kind of wait a little bit on. Uh, but the other one, they nearly went out of business because it just, they just weren't prepared for it, right? So right, yeah, just, air gapping is a key thing, right? You know, where do I put my data that can't be touched, right? That's a fairly easy thing to start off with. Yeah, and then the whole process of recovery, who's on deck, you know, et cetera, et cetera. How communications occurs is there's 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 technology, and of course, as always, there's there's people in process. Well, Tim, I'll give yep. you the last word. Um, bring us home. Bring us home. Hey, Dave, thanks very much for your time today. This was a great time talking to you uh, about some key things that we've worked with day in, day out over the last couple of months. Uh, again, you know, bringing our solutions to our customers uh, that they demand that excellence from us, uh, bringing IBM solutions that we're, we natively know and love and trust because we've done them many, many times with other customers. So pretty excited about what's going on in the industry, uh, looking at all those shiny new nickels and see which one are actually shiny at the end of the day. All right, Tim, well, listen, Thanks for coming back in theCUBE. It's great to see you. I hope we get to see each other uh, face to face. Uh, Sounds good, Dave. Safe. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. And thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. Go to siliconangle.com. You'll check out all the news. Go to theCUBE.net, where all these videos live, and wikibon.com, where I publish weekly. We'll see you next time on theCUBE.